My name is Devin Brock Montgomery, and I'm the Water Quality Program Manager at the Savannah Institute. And today we are in Spring Green, Wisconsin, at the Spring Green campus, doing some water quality monitoring to keep an eye on the health and well-being of these water resources and get a baseline on what they're looking like as we introduce more perennial plants into these systems. So the monitoring that we're doing today is focused on a few physical, chemical, and biotic indicators of stream health. On the physical side, we monitor things like stream flow, how much water is moving by one point. We also look at things like stream temperature, which could be important for some biotic species. So this stream is home to one of two populations of the native Wisconsin driftless brook trout. So we want to make sure that that trout is able to exist and happily thrive for decades into the future and one of the things they need is cold water. So we, we monitor water temperature. On the chemical side, they also need a lot of oxygen. So we actually do some streamside field chemistry to determine the amount of oxygen in that water. And then we'll know if it is good for trout and other species that use cold water habitats. And we also will take uh, samples of the water that we can run in a lab later to look at things like the total phosphorus content which is an important nutrient that can fuel uh, algal blooms, harmful algal blooms that might cause problems. And this stream might also cause problems downstream in lakes and rivers and all the way to the Gulf of, of Mexico where excess nutrients lead to these algal blooms that then uh, die and lead to very low oxygen content that can kind of kill everything. So reducing those nutrients is, is important and that's one of the things that we're measuring here today. The way we, we determine uh, the, the amount of water, so the stream flow rate, is by measuring out a section of stream, and then we want to use something that floats downstream and has about the same density as water, so that it'll float like water. And a tennis ball is reasonably good at this. So we'll actually just measure several times the amount of time it takes for that tennis ball to float from point A to point B. Stop. That one was 29.9. We expected to Okay. Different parts of the stream are moving a little bit faster and slower. And then across that same transect, we'll also take a point and get uh, depth measurements. So between those two measurements, how much, how fast water is moving, and then sort of a plane of how much area is the water moving across, we can actually back out how many gallons moved through the stream over some period of time. And then that's very useful if we tie that to something like the phosphorus concentration. Then we not only know the concentration of phosphorus in the water, but we know how many pounds, say, of phosphorus might move through that stream in a given day or month or year and add that up to see what parts of the watershed do we need to focus on if we're interested in reducing phosphorus concentrations downstream. It's important to get both the physical and chemical side. And you use this to estimate the clarity of the water. So there are a number of benefits to agroforestry, and water quality may not be the most apparent of them, but we're being really intentional about weaving this priority into everything we do at Savannah Institute. So there are a number of projects. There's one focused on the Great Lakes Basin, which is supported by the Great Lakes Protection Fund. And we're also working on an EPA-funded project in the Gulf of Mexico. And so. That is to say that our geography and the impacts of these reduced nutrient loads will be far beyond Wisconsin, far beyond Lowry Creek. This really has a national scale at this point because the practices that we use upstream will move and will impact farmers and communities and recreators miles, hundreds of miles from where we are right now.